Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode and hope everyone's staying very safe and healthy. We're back with one of my favorite episodes of the channel. It is my monthly unboxing haul. We still got a ton of new releases and updates and a ton of stuff came into the studio. So today we're gonna take a look at all of that and any of the stuff that you may have missed. Before we do get started though, just like every one of my unboxing hauls, I'm hooking one of you up with one of the items from today's episode. So all you have to do is sub to the channel, leave a comment down below on what your fave was, follow me over on social, and in my next monthly tech unboxing haul, I'll be announcing the winner. I know some of my previous shipments have been delayed. International shipping is a tad bit wonky right now, so stay posted. I promise to get everything out shortly, and let's get to our first item of the month. It's spring, summer, first good day of weather in Toronto. So the first were the big updates from Apple. We had the 2020 MacBook Air as well as iPad Pro. Those unboxings were some of the best and most popular on the channel and I haven't been using my MacBook Air as much. I wanna give you guys my report on the iPad Pro as a standalone device. And I could only give my full thoughts when it was comboed with the Magic Keyboard, which you see. It hasn't really held up the best over the past week and a half to two weeks. It's like any other case, it collects a ton of lint and weird scratches on the outside because it is in a soft touch plastic. And when you combine this with the iPad Pro, it actually weighs more than the MacBook Air, which is surprising. It's got a thicker form factor, a thicker footprint, and we've seen all the ridiculous things on the internet, how people have been using this with the Apple Pencil because it doesn't fully work in tablet mode. Do not do this with your iPad Pro case. I did though want to talk about some possible alternatives. Logitech did send over a bunch of stuff and their first was the Slim Folio Pro and that competes directly with the Magic Keyboard. Obviously not as expensive, so we will unpackage this. Still that soft touch plastic, but you're not burning $300, so it doesn't feel as outrageous. The iPad actually sits more in it like a case. This one also has a mechanical keyboard layout and it does have backlit keys. However, it is missing that trackpad support. I think that's what makes the Magic Magic Keyboard so good. It's a cool and cheaper alternative. I still push more towards the MacBook Air, but this is the device that I've been looking forward to most. It's their power bed. This device will charge up all of your Apple products since we're still waiting for that mythical Air power. That looks slick. It looks like something Apple would make. So technically now, if we take all of these devices, we've got my Apple Watch that should snap on right there. Charging, one for one. Charging, two for two. And my AirPods. I think this is a pretty dope accessory. Of course, you have to have the range and suite of Apple products, but if you are an Apple fanboy, I think this could be a dope buy. And to round off all the Apple stuff, we of course got the brand new iPhone SE, their budget phone, 399 bucks. I did an unboxing of the white, but I did get my product red a couple days later, so I will of course box this here. Designed by California in Apple, gotta get that in. And remember, the iPhone SE only came in the three colorways, the white, red, as well as the black. And the only difference here, you will see these small product red logos on the back of the device, but other than that, exactly the same, and you just get to choose between your colorway options. And of course, the last two smartphones that we got into the studio this month were the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro. You see the slight size difference there? Very pricey devices around that $1,000 price point, but OnePlus has packed every single feature into both the 8 and 8 Pro. 120 hertz refresh versus the 9, We've got a Warp Charge 30T and you can even do that wirelessly now. No doubt that it is a flagship, but it also brings in that flagship price. It is still cheaper though than the S20 Ultra and in my opinion, the best Android smartphone that you can currently buy. And we have the two most popular colorways here, my choice still being the Ultramarine Blue, my favorite smartphone finish of 2020. Last couple things, we've got the Galaxy Book S. I remember seeing this at CES in 2020, beginning of this year. The design and build of it has been great and the portability, I think, is its highlight and selling point. Should be great for students or even business people. And we also got a new Xbox limited edition controller. This is their Cyberpunk 2077 one. The limited edition console should be coming when the game releases. I think it's later on in 2020. I have already been rocking some COD with this. I know that there are two different color variants, but this one is cool. It's got little etchings or engravings, no future on one side. 
I'm a big Xbox controller fan, so this was nice to add to the collection. And last but not least, we've got something special. God. <sighs> this is the Ultimate Collector Series Starship Destroyer from LEGO. It is one of the biggest sets that you can build. I know during quarantine, people are building puzzles. We gotta one-up that and have something dope for the new studio, this is going to be my next feature build, so big shout outs to LEGO. Most of you already know I'm a huge LEGO fan, specifically Star Wars ships, so this is the absolute grail of that. 4,784 pieces. Oh my God, I could use this to work out. But yeah, that has been my monthly tech unboxing haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this vid, and remember to win one of the items, leave a comment down below. It will not be the Lego set. I can already guarantee you that. That is for me to build. Really hoping that you're all staying healthy and safe, and we'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids or vlogs. Peace.